Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we've got another month of vintage paperback purchases to go through, clean up and uh, well, basically discuss and see what I found during the month of November. Now I didn't pick up stacks of books but what you see here is what I managed to get my hands on this time round. So that's what we'll be having a look at today. So sit back, relax and let's get to it. Okay, so I don't often have magazines, but um, in this little batch of paperbacks that I got, I got a couple of Western mags which turned up in it. Now this is uh, this is a British one, dated September 1949. It is in particularly bad condition, um, so I don't really know what to do with this because it's um, it is yeah. Look, the cover in fact is completely detached, um, so there's not really a great deal I can do with this. It's got three three stories inside there. Um, maybe someone can tell me if these are any good. Stuart Emery, Walt Coburn, H. Bed Bedford Jones are the three authors there. Um, I mean, it's nice. I haven't got any of these in my sort of collection. I don't really collect them per se. Um, I've had pulps through my hands over the years, but not many, you know, just at sort of a few. Lots of sci-fi stuff, um, which once again, I've had to let go because I just didn't have the space for them. Um, but at one point, I did have a huge uh, pulp sci-fi collection. Anyway, um, there's, there's literally nothing I can do with that. So I'm um, just going to put it carefully to one side because it is what it is. It's a bit of a curiosity. This one's really nice, uh, a Point Forty Four Western magazine. Once again, British edition. So it is a British version, a bit like the comics, um, of an American magazine here. Got a really nice spine on it. I would imagine it'll tell us what issue number and date it is. Once so we get into it, very pulpy paper. Here we are, so down below here, published by Month of Popular Publications in Indiana. Looking for any sort of date. Hmm. Usually they would be on the inside here, wouldn't they? But I can't see anything there. So I don't know if it's... It looks sort of 50s, early 60s, doesn't it, to me? But there's no actual date on that one at all. Back cover, possibly. No. Well, it's not a bad copy. Maybe one of my viewers can give us a bit more detail on that one, but just something a little bit more interesting. And they they just turned up in a little lot. So uh, I'm keeping them, but there's not really a great deal I can do with them. Um, so let's see what we got here. So there's a few more paperbacks. So I am trying to get together a run of all the American Ian Fleming books. Now, although this isn't a James Bond, it is one which... Um, well, it's, if you've never read The Diamond Smugglers, it's really, really good. It's a great, great book. I'm sure he used what he found, because this is non-fiction, what he found researched in this book um, as the basis for um, Diamonds Are Forever. Um, but, so this is the first US paperback printing of this one. Uh, copyrighted 1957, but originally. But this Collier Books edition was 1964 when this one came out. And I, there is like a little... 40 cents or something inside there. So I'm just going to get that that bit rubbed out. And on these paperbacks, I am going to just go through them initially, get out any internal marks. Then I'm going to put my trusty toothbrush along the top and then um, we'll give the co covers a polish as well. Um, Appleby Talking, this is a four square. Michael Inners. Um, part of these were a little little batch of crime books I picked up. Nothing too special. Um, some of it far too recent for me, so they've sort of been pulled to one side. I'm only interested in the vintage stuff. Uh, Rex Stout, Too Many Cooks. This is a panther, a bit of a later panther crime book. From the 60s again, I'm thinking. Yeah, 1966. Don't mind the, uh, the panther books, they're pretty cool. Let's get another little wedge here. So more Edgar Wallace. So I bought a lot of Edgar Wallace recently off one particular uh, chap who was clearing out his uncle's books. Um, this is not from that collection, but ironically, it's one I don't think I came across. Um, it is in Arrow paperbacks, and I'm not really a fan of the Arrow ones. Um, Flat 2, this one's cool. That's an unusual name, isn't it? 
flat too hard, it's got some tape inside. Yeah, that's a shame. 1961, not the greatest of conditions. Um, and I got the, there is some damage on the spine there. So I probably won't do much with that one. I think that one's just going to go in the, uh, the rejects file because of that big bit of tape inside. Um, another Edgar Wallace here, Lieutenant Bones, a ward lock book. I don't see many of these, to be honest. This is ward lock number 63. Yeah, these don't turn up very often. This is probably quite scarce, you know. I wonder if it's got a date on it. It's probably early 60s. 1958. So it's actually a couple of years earlier than I than I thought this one. That's pretty pretty scarce, that one. Here's a standard old pan. One of the, the better Edgar Wallace's. It stands up okay, this one. Um, a nice cover by uh, Peff. And that's for the Forger. Definitely already got this one, but... Um, and it's quite foxed as well inside. But it's a first edition. So I'll put that one in my swaps pile. Um, again, the ringer. Edgar Wallace again. It's again, quite a little bit foxed. But nothing internal that I can see. Maybe a very, very light um, possible 150 or something that someone's paid for that. You can hardly see it. But there we are. That's it gone now. A few more. This is quite nice. Uh, Kips by H.G. Wells. Definitely haven't got this one. This is a nice early... Oh, look at that. It's Fontana number 500. And it's a film tie-in with Michael Redgraves. It's the, the film tie-in of Kips. Uh, who'd have thought? A little name, in, a little date inside, July 61. And it is the first Fontana printing. It looks really, really nice condition. I'm almost mint. <clears throat> Now we've got Sherlock Holmes, or oh, I do love a bit of Sherlock Holmes. This is quite a nice copy of The Valley of Fear. Can't complain at that. That's actually really, really quite nice. And it's the second printing for Pan from 1952. So I'll double check that one, see if there's any sort of variant on the cover. I don't think there is on that one. I think that's the same as the first edition cover. Now a nice copy of Christie's The Mysterious Affair at Styles. Says that this is certainly a reprint. Now it's got a cover by W. Francis Phillips. He did quite a bit for, for Pan and Hodder and some of the other publishers. Later on went to work for New England Library and um, did the cover to The Rats. Um, so this edition first came out in 1955. Sorry, 1954 was the first Pan edition. Then it got reprinted multiple times. So I shall check that one in my collection to see if I've got that cover, because if I haven't, I'm keeping it, and I don't think I have. So quite pleased to have that one, because I've started picking up the different covers now. Now I've got a, a small handful of King Penguins. As you know, I've been trying to get the full set of 76. Um, I'm almost there. Uh, literally, it's just a, just a small handful now. This one has proved quite elusive, uh, the Book of English Clocks. Um, and it's not this copy, unfortunately, it's just not quite up to standard. Um, not really sure what to do with this because I could, as you can see there, I could put a run of glue down the spine and that would sort it out. It's just not great. I don't know what else I could do with that one. It's got a small name inside, but it's in fountain pen ink, so I'm not going to be able to do much about that. It is real, a real scarce one. This has taken me ages to pick up a copy in first edition. 1947, this one came out. Um, so I'm not. I'm in two minds whether to just run a bit of glue along, along in there and try and glue the spine back down. I think that's about all I can do on that. So that's one to be worked on. So I'm going to pop that over to that side. We'll carry on looking through some of the new acquisitions. Um, another scarce King Penguin, Elizabethan miniatures. Now this one has got a small set of initials inside here, J-E. And as I said, it's a very... It's a really, really nice uh, se uh, series to collect, um, but some of them are proven quite well. A handful are proven a little bit elusive, but um, I'm confident I can pick them all out. But on reflection, 
if I'd have decided to, because um, I've been collecting them for years, if I'd have just decided to buy a set in one hit, I probably would have saved myself a lot of time. <laughs> um, this is uh, British Butterflies, and someone's actually popped this one into a, um, a plastic sleeve, so I'm going to take that off for now because I generally have none, n my king penguins aren't in sleeves at all. I haven't protected the dust wrappers per se. So this is one of the later ones which comes with a dust wrapper. It's got the usual fading on the spine and um, unfortunately getting these last few now I've sort of resigned myself that that is going to be the case. Um, it still looks all right on the shelf um, and that's the main thing but some of these are, are proving quite quite elusive now so I just want to to get the set licked really. There's a tiny little bit of pencil in the corner there so I'm just going to grab that bit That's another one out of the way. And the last King Penguin today, popular art in the United States. This is uh, King Penguin number 50. Wasn't issued with a dust wrapper. 1948. That one there, it's got some um, interesting bookseller marks on there, but they are bookseller ones. They're not part of the published book um, and they're no particular relevance. So I'm going to just rub those out in this particular case. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but in this case they're coming out. Because on the whole, that's actually quite a nice copy of that one. So I'm popping that back over there because it needs some work, and that's that one. Right, let's continue this one. So this I was not sure about at all. Um, so this is a Collins White Circle. Now they're more famous for doing their crime books, you know, those distinctive green and yellow sort of crime ones, the green, crime of the green and uh, westerns of the yellow. Um, this one here is one of their N series, which I believe is non-fiction. Um, it's got a blank back, but as you can see, one of the pages has come right out. I don't know if it's come out or if it's just, apart from that, it's a really not too bad copy. Um, is it loose or is it just badly cut? because of the whole piece of paper. Yeah, well, it's difficult to tell. I think the best course of action with that, because it is like falling, I could either fold it in, which would probably be the easiest solution, just sort of fold it in on itself, or I could trim it down, but I'm a bit reluctant to trim it down. I just, for now, I'm just gonna leave it like that. However, I've noticed the bottom of the spine there needs a tiny bit of glue on it. So what I'll do, I've got my Pritt stick here. I'm just gonna put a tiny slither on the end of this screwdriver and slide it into there, like so. And that'll be the first bit. And then stage two, I actually need to pull that bit out. So there we are. So it's multi-layered this. So I need a tiny little bit of glue on the end there. Just enough to pop that back in and stop it getting any worse. There we are. That'll keep it in one in one piece, and that's that's the main thing. In a lot of cases, all we're doing here is, uh, if we do need to do the odd repair, it's just keeping the books intact as best we can. So here's another little panther, and this is uh, T. E. Lawrence's The Mint. Don't know this one. I obviously, no Lawrence of Arabia. There he is there from the movie, portrayed by Peter O'Toole. Great, great film, that one. This is a, a reprint from 1963. It's got one little 199 inside, so we'll get, get rid of that. There we go. 
a western again. So he carried a six shooter, a corgi giant. In fact, it's got a wrap around jacket, which I should gently see if I can pop into picture there. Great. I'm not sure who that jacket is by. It's right down in the corner, but there's a little crease over it. But it's a nice one, Stuart N. Lake. The incredible crew of Wire Herp, the old Southwest's greatest gunfighter. I definitely haven't got this one. Big old thick book, this for a corgi. That's guess what? It's a giant. Just a couple of corners there that have um, page edges, page corners that folded over. Yeah, when nice westerns have sort of come my way, I've started picking them up now because I've got a few in my collection. They do look great when they're on the shelf together and it's nice to have the option to, to dip in and out at some point. Now these um, these just turned up in a job lot. I don't really collect Charlie Brown anymore. I used to have loads of uh, sort of Peanuts books. So I'm just zipping through just to see what sort of printings they are. So these are just, it's 1972. These may all just be early early 70s reprints that I've just put in a little job lot together. Yeah, 73. This is a little bit earlier by the look of it. This is a 60s one. Still a reprint, 1967. So I'll put them to one side. Here's a nice Zane Grey, and this is um, a Hodder and Stoughton yellow jacket. So it's one of their earlier sort of lines. This is C89 in the Hodder and Stoughton yellow jacket series. A little name inside there that we're going to pull out. That edition, 1952, this one came out. But as you can see, it's got a tiny little name on the inside cover there. Nothing we can't get a shot of. We've got a few more in that series to come. Right, let's get another part. Here we are. So, nice Fontana. I think I'll just pause there and I'll pull the camera out just a touch. Here we are. So, dead men don't ski. Well, that's correct because they'd be dead. Um, dope smuggling, intrigue, and murder in the Italian Dolomites. Well, there, there you go. That's a, that's a tease for you, isn't it? Another nice Fontana from five seven six. Even got the original ad inside. Nineteen sixty one again. That's all right. That's a nice jacket as well, isn't it? Murder makes mistakes. George Belair's. Trying to see who the cover artist is, and it looks, I'm not sure if it's McLaughlin, possibly. Very nice, whatever. A console, 1958 was when it was first written, that one. Julian Simmons again, another Panther crime title. Francis Quarles investigates. Tales for the Connoisseur of Detective Fiction. Another nice tight copy, that one. 1965. See, some of these are really, really nice. They're really nice editions. A hotter one here, Michael Gilbert, Small Bone Deceased. I don't collect the hotter ones, but I've had loads through my uh, hands, and they're not bad, actually. Um, predominantly, uh, John Creasy did a, a huge amount for him. But that's really nice again. Uh, another four square here, Edmund Crispin. So I do like four square books, a four square crime. Frequent hearses. <laughs> nice white cover. As you can see, these is this is on the cusp here. So a year or two later, these would all become New England Library books. And then another Fontana, a bit of a later one, 1061. Patrick Patricia Moyles, The Sunken Sailor. I don't know, this might be a reprint looking at the style. No, nope, it's the first still, 1965. Don't know much about that, that authoress. Okay, so we got a few more here. So Rex Stout, this is another Panther crime. Nice neck, these. I haven't had any new Panthers in a long time, so it's nice to have a few here. 1963, Murder by the Book. 
Fontana now. Julian Simmons, The Colour of Murder. Fontana again, 1027. Another one with its original reading advert in, that's nice. This is a second though from 1964, probably with a different jacket. This is a earlier Julian Simmons and Fontana, a bit worn though, unfortunately, uh, number 534. This one's actually quite in a bit of a worn old state, as you can see. It's almost like it's got wet or dirty or something like that, but it is a first from 61, but as you can see, yeah, it's sort of lost its luster, if that makes sense. Now a great pan, a John Ross MacDonald. Can't remember if, I, if I've got this one, number 580. It may be a new addition to my collection, which is cool. There he is. Certainly now that I've got all the numbered pans licked, I've earnestly started on the great pans. I've not really had a chance to go through and start looking books up, book by book by book. Um, but I think I'm down to maybe about 80, 70 or 80 great pans needed for the set of those. Um, here's another one, but I'm certain I've got this, G223. However, this is a, a nice copy, so maybe I'll need to compare it against my own one. If not, it will just go in with my doubles, which um, uh, end up on on eBay. Definitely got this one as well, but it's a, once again, it's a nice copy. Lovely PEF jacket, the case of a moth-eaten mink. And it's got his little signature down there. I really like the detail on this with the, uh, the pair of hands putting the bullet into the chamber of the gun. And then a typical sort of PEF woman there on the side. Yeah, nice, uh, nice copy of this one, a little bit dusty, but we'll sort that out in a minute. 1961, so that's 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 nice, like that one. And another pan, The Mind of Mr. J.G. Reader. Um, I've had a couple of copies of this in Fontana, uh, not Fontana, in Hodder editions. And because um, I don't collect those, I've popped them onto eBay. And I've been surprised that this particular book has gone for good money, sort of like £7.50, um, £10. And I was surprised, I didn't know why. So maybe this particular one. Is, is really sought after. That's a nice copy. And I don't think I've got the pan one of it. Another pan, The Two Faces of January. This is one from Patricia Highsmith, who I do like. And this is their later sort of crime ones, American crime, where they've got the handcuffs and they've got the tiny little vignette illustration inside the handcuff, which I think is a bit of a cop out, to be honest. I prefer, well, a beautiful jacket like the one we just saw. Um, it is what it is. And there she is on the back. But as I said, don't mind Patricia Highsmith. Um, she is a good author and one uh, one that you might want to try. Now we've just got a few more Hodder and Stoughton yellow jackets again. So Victor Canning, uh, The Chasm. These are quite nice. This is C75. These are also 1952, this one. And on the whole, I've not needed to do too much on these. I will just give them all a dust off in a minute. Mr. Finchley discovers his England. This is number 177. A little bit later, 1954. And the last, Victor Canning, The Golden Salamander. Now, this looks like a movie tie-in, doesn't it? Look at that. That's a picture on the front there. What's all this about, then? 1953. And the last one we've got is a Doctor Who, one of the Doctor Who's that I need. But once again, this is turned up in quite a state. Now, you can't see it there, but the cover is it's all sort of mottled, like it's been left out in the rain or something. But I have a feeling I might be able to save it. It's quite foxed along the top there. I only paid peanuts for this book, which generally in mint goes for about a tenner. So I'll have a look and see if it can be saved or not. But that one definitely needs quite a bit of work. So I think what we'd do then, if I go back to, that's all the books. If I'm going to go back to this one, I'm going to put a run of, um, I'm going to put a run of glue down the spine there, I think. Just because um, I'd rather it was glued in than loose, basically. So let's just lift that up. Now it is still attached down the bottom there. So that's where we're going to start. And I'm going to try and get, there we are, got it out now. Let's try and get some glue in there. Now that that bit's come off, I can actually just run the glue the glue down there, which is what I think I'll do. Um, as I said, this is only going to be a holding copy. 
until I can get a better one. But because it's taken me so long to find a nice copy of the Book of English Clocks, I'm just going to keep this one for now as a place filler. That'll probably be enough, to be honest. So squeeze it in nice and tight. Let's pop that, that little bit out there. There we go. And it's not perfect, but it's just going to stop it getting any worse, to be honest, whilst it's on the shelf until I can find a, a better example of what is actually quite a tough little penguin, a uh, king penguin, to get this one. Right. Now, that Doctor Who and the Pescatons, that really is rough. So, just do this top edge. This one's just going to get its own sort of treatment straight away, I think, because it's just so bad. And it may be that it just can't be saved, but good old Victor Pouch. Now, this wasn't actually a Doctor Who book that adapted a, um, a TV episode. This was one that adapt. This came out as an LP. Now, Victor Pemberton did write a famous Doctor Who story called Fury from the Deep, which was filmed as a Patrick Troughton story. Um, and he did write the novelization of Fury from the Deep as well. I had the great pleasure of, of spending a day or two with him in a uh, convention in London uh, back in the 80s where I used to go to Doctor Who cons and he was there. Uh, absolutely perfect gent. And um, I remember with Fury from the Deep, I actually had the story on audiobook, uh, which had just been like, audio dubs from TV, which he'd never even been given when he was given the the job of writing the paperback. He was just, uh, had to refer to his original scripts. So I sent up a copy to him of the Free From The Deep audio, plus some stuff that, some fan analysis, things that have been published on it, photocopies of all that. And he was absolutely over the moon, sent me back some nice stuff, which was really great. Really, really nice guy. He went on to do the British version of Fraggle Rock, believe it or not, which had uh, quite a lot of success worldwide, that one, uh, for Jim Henson's company. That was sort of the last thing he did. So this is definitely coming up better than it was. And, you know, when you have a look at the, um, the duster in a minute, I think you're going to be absolutely amazed with the dirt that's come off. Look at that. That's off one book. Blimmin' incredible, isn't it? That feels a lot better. But if I have a look at it now... Yeah, certainly, I've, I've not done badly there. It's certainly come up a lot, lot better than it was. Um, I'll keep it because it's one that I need out of the uh, Doctor Who library. I'm very, very close to, once again, it's another series I'm super close to finishing, but it's not perfect in, in any way. And um, it's a shame because um, I would like a nice, nice copy of this one. But as soon as I get another one, which is a bit better than this. I shall use this one as my reading copy because it's a great story. Quite atmospheric, this one. So that one, yeah, that's okay. That looks a lot better than it did. Right, now to do some sort of mass, mass cleaning. So if we take a little pile, we need to get them size-wise sort of in a little, little hand like that. So there's five roughly the same size and we'll just do these edges here now it may seem that this month I've not actually bought that many paperbacks and I guess to be honest I probably haven't um, I've not gone crazy, but I've just not had the opportunity. The stuff just hasn't come my way. So, you know, I can't pull it out of thin air. So if some months I don't have more than other months, well, that's just how it's gone, you know. Um, one thing I have bought this month, but I've not included because I'm going to do sort of a separate cleaning video on those once I've got them all, is I have been putting together a set of the Ian Fleming books in book club edition. So these are ones which came out through the Thriller Book Club, and also one called the uh, the Companion Book Club, and then the very there's a couple of nice omnibuses which came out under sort of uh, book club associates. So 
those ones are actually um, I've kept those back so they have been bought fairly recently so they should theoretically be in these videos but because they're going to have their own video I've kept them back for now but have no fear they will be featured soon enough these uh I said I'm popping them into sort of size piles because it just makes them easier to clean then. So there's five there, similar sort of size. And you can do about five at a time without any sort of issue. The bottom edges, of course, don't pick up too much dust, but the top edges generally, well, they, they vary, but they generally can be in a bit of a, a bit of a state. five books so this one will be going out in December so season's greetings to everyone let's hope 2020 is the, the year we can hopefully forget now there's good stuff to come in 2021 I for one I'm definitely hoping we can get out to uh, a book fair or two that's for certain um, it's been pretty barren but thankfully we've had the internet so thank goodness for that eh? um, it's kept us all sane we've been able to buy stuff and hopefully watch our favorite book youtubers <laughs> I have to say the uh, the channel itself this year has gone absolutely great guns I'm very very grateful for everyone who watches so thank you very much for that do please tell your friends if you enjoy these videos um post it on reddit and you know, share them on facebook it really does help get the word out and help the channel grow and help me do more videos yeah these haven't taken too much work at all actually this time around have they some pretty pleased with that These last two sort of smaller ones now. Corgi in the console. And to be honest, none of these were even that dusty, were they? They weren't too bad at all. So that's them all sort of gone through. They've been internally cleaned. The edges have been rubbed as well so externally. Just needs the, uh, the covers to be cleaned. So that'll be the very last bit that we'll do now. Right then, so I'm just damping my cloth here, so it's ready for action. And I'm just going to run this this cloth with. Um, I've used my a blast of Mr. Sheen here, just because that furniture polish just seems to be really good at getting off a sort of cover fingerprints and stuff like that off the front cover of books. Um, obviously, these can only be done on uh, books which have got like a shiny or plasticky surface. So for that reason alone, um, the pulp magazines from the start plus all the king penguins none of those fit the bill uh, you can't do that on on you can't do this process on those books it's just impossible but these ones here are absolutely fine because they've got sort of uh, uh, a semi-glossy front cover and in a lot of cases although you can't quite see the dirt believe me it's there and when you've got the books in the flesh in front of you they really do come up uh, quite lovely and uh, that it's only a good thing. It's only a good thing. So look at that already. I've got that that much dirt off these, you know, which is uh, incredible when you think about it. But these books haven't been... Uh, look how that's come up nice and bright. These haven't been touched in 70 years. Now, these are come from the original owner, the guy who bought them brand new. Um, they've never uh, been into the hands of a collector or someone who might give them a bit of TLC and get them back up to uh, a decent quality and standard, which is what I'm doing. 
and they do look lovely when they've been done. They really do. Some of these have come up absolutely excellent, particularly when a book has only been read the once. You know, you know that when you get your hands on it, you can uh, polish it up like a nice diamond. There we are, that's nice. Now we've already done the Doctor Who, so we don't need to do that one again. And I think as we do these, I'll pop them up to one side so we can have a look as we go along. A little bit more polish here. surprised how uh, some of these books that I've had for years once I've given them this sort of treatment how well they've actually come up and uh, it's another real good example of one that's come up really nicely once it's had a little bit of uh, time spent on it just to get it looking sharp again Now this one, of course, uh, this has got like a papery cover, so I can't, I can't put the, the polish on that because it will potentially soak into the cover and ruin it. Um, so that one has to get a pass. Although it's not bad anyway. Um, it's one of those slightly weird non-fiction ones, but I definitely haven't got it in my Collins collection, so I'm not too, not too fussed about it. And I'm pleased to have it all the same because it is uh, probably quite scarce. So. It's a nice uh, Patricia Harsmith. Just move the camera again slightly, just so we can uh, see exactly what's going on. Now we've got that odd order title here. And I don't know if you're going to be able to discern it on the, the video, but um, on a title like this, with a white cover, any sort of little fingerprints on that show up really easily. Um, and once I have sort of cleaned it, the difference it makes is uh, incredible. So I suppose it's a good time really just to reflect on what a year it's been. Certainly for me, I've, um, I don't remember a year when I picked up so many books, admittedly the pan collection from the summer was a uh, one of the highlights um you don't get that very often you know it's like a once in a lifetime you get that many books of a particular sort um it has happened in the past but not with pan books it's happened with pulps and stuff um so i do count myself very lucky and my own collection has massively benefited because I had so many books in one hit. Um, also, you know, I've been able to share that discovery with you guys on YouTube, and I think that's really uh, that's been really cool as well. It's really encouraged me and um, uh, motivated me to process it, get rid of all my doubles, and uh, my own collection is looking superior because of it. Um, because I put the work in, and um, thank you for that. Um, certainly, the feedback has been fantastic on the videos so I'm really really pleased and uh, glad to be a small part of what is a massive hobby um, I think people underestimate the amount of paperback collectors out there and then you know even if you don't collect paperbacks but you're into a certain genre like men's adventure or westerns or horror and that I think I sort of cover a little bit of it all don't I really because I love it all uh, I just like old books whatever they're sort of um content in a lot of cases you know so certainly when i collect publishers um like pan or penguin or something i'm trying to get everything that they ever published um whereas other ones i'm somewhat more selective you know it'll be particular authors who i enjoy for example 
So these pans, these clean up, absolutely standard, exactly as you would expect. Um, nothing too complicated here. And I do hope that this, these sort of clean videos have encouraged you to um, to go and look at your collections and maybe give them a bit of a once over because believe me, it really, really does make a difference. Um, this one's another semi matte cover, so I'm only ever so lightly doing it on this one, um, just to hopefully not make any, um, you know, I don't wanna make it worse than it is. In actual fact, that was absolutely fine, just to gently do that. Need a bit more polish again here. A couple more in this part here, so this is that nice four square. Really nice bright white cover on this one. So yeah, it looks as if, as I film this, the vaccine in the UK is about to go nationwide from next week um, and start immunising the uh, population. So they're saying approximately Easter, sort of March, April next year, which will be about a year since the pandemic really hit home. By that time, we should be on our way for things to start to get back to normal. So it can't be a moment too soon, let's be honest. Um, so many people have lost their jobs or have been on reduced earnings. Um, it's completely reshaped the retail landscape in the UK. Um, many, many shops have gone to the wall, big big ones as well as small. Um, I know uh, bookshops have moved online and I've tried to support them when I can. Um, when we had li little brief respites in lockdowns, I've gone to local secondhand bookshops if they've been open and supported them when I can and it was great to do. Um, but generally speaking, it's been a tough old time. But if you're just looking to buy books, there is an endless supply. We've always got Amazon and we've got eBay. Um, and we've got our Facebook groups where we trade all the time. So once again, that's that's really good. But certainly the uh, high street bookshops have been suffering a little bit. And uh, they weren't classed as essential. And... I was having this argument with someone recently that um, in certain supermarkets, for example, in France, um, they weren't allowed. They were open, but they wouldn't be allowed to sell books because books weren't classed as an essential purchase. That's not been the case in the UK. In UK supermarkets are allowed to sell books whilst the bookshops have been shut, which obviously seems a bit unfair, but. All these national book chains, they've all got their own websites, the same as Amazon. So there's nothing stopping people, if they want to go and support that retailer, they can just go to the, that company's website. If that company hasn't got a very good website, that's down to them. And they should have moved with the times long, long ago. Um, and perhaps they haven't. So I've only got a certain level of sympathy. Um, when I see some of the amazing work that's done by independent bookshops that really it's just maybe one or two shops in the in the that they own and the way that they have engaged their customers on instagram and twitter they um they've done drop-offs they've got good websites that's how it should be done and i think some of the uh, national chains unfortunately have missed the boat there or have been a bit too stuck up or they just haven't been bothered to put the investment in to, to, to explore that avenue because it's massive, it's untapped, and I just don't think some of the uh, national booksellers have done a very good job of it. So unfortunately, as much as I have many friends in, who work for national booksellers, they need to sh shut up moaning um, because it's partly of their own making. It's the state that they're in at the moment, and I really, really wouldn't be surprised if I saw one of them... Uh, one or two of the bigger ones either have to shut shops or they go down completely. So that's definitely a possibility. And that would simply be on the back of years of neglect of certain aspects of the business. Underpayment of staff, I think, was a big focus at the start of this, just before the pandemic hit out, uh, where staff were being on minimum wage, um, which is absolutely disgusting when some of them are being like career booksellers for 30 plus years. All the real expensive booksellers of course were made redundant long long ago but even so I digress as you can see I'm a bit bitter about certain parts of it of the British book trade I haven't looked at it been part of it and worked for it 
it's not great, believe me. But there you go. If you're a book buyer, a book lover, you've got all manner of choices to get your books from, and you don't have to go to a retail bookstore if you don't want to. Um, and if you do, I would suggest trying, if you've, if you've got one near you, to try and support a local independent bookshop rather than a national, which have got far more staying power behind them. And definitely support your second-hand shops. That's where you'll get some nice bargains. All right, last few coming up now. Please don't think I'm being controversial. I'm not, you know, I don't want anyone to lose their job in whatever business they're in. But I think some businesses that have gone to the dogs were suffering before the pandemic came along. And the pandemic has now put the final nail in their coffins, really, which is a shame. But maybe it was, you know, it's just hastened what was happening and inevitable anyway. Yeah, I think out of all the books today, this um, this one here, even though I've already got it, I think that was the standout. Just such a great jacket. I'm sure mine's not that nice, so I'm really, really pleased with that one. Nice white pages as well. And sometimes you have to buy a little lot of books just to get two or three that you might need, but I don't mind that so much. one it was that lovely Fontana edition of Kips which I was very pleased to get I can't believe how nice condition this particular one is really uh, really great actually there we are bro right let's have one last look so there you go I hope you've enjoyed that little latest cleaning video of my book pickups for November. As I said, there wasn't hundreds of books this time, but there was enough to uh, warrant a video, and uh, they certainly look better now that they've been cleaned. Um, if you have enjoyed today's video, do please give it a thumbs up. Uh, do please consider subscribing for regular vintage paperback content, and I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.